In this tutorial video, we'll start introducing you how to do object-oriented programming in Java. Eventually, we're going to go over all the ingredients for object-oriented programming. And for short, I'm just going to abbreviate object-oriented programming as OOP. Okay, so that's an acronym you want to get used to. OOP over here. And uh, we're going to actually go over the ingredients bits by bits. For this current video, we're going to focus on how you can develop a template or in Java term classes. And the way you develop classes will be on at the compile time, which means you simply by typing uh, some characters or uh, by keystrokes on the Eclipse editor. And then we're going to see how you can define attributes. And eventually we're going to see uh, a, how you can define three kinds of methods. Uh, method, each method is basically just a block of code they can actually keep calling to reuse. And specifically, we're going to see how we can uh, define constructor, which is a very special kind of method. And then we're also going to see how you can create instances or entities. In Java terms, how you can create objects. And objects are runtime phenomena, which means you have to execute a code uh, in order to see, uh, in order to visualize the objects. Okay, so these are the parts we're going to focus on for the current video, and uh, we're going to go back to uh, the remaining parts for later videos. As an example, let me just give you a little bit uh, background over here. Okay, so every time when you want to do object-oriented programming, you want to be given a problem to solve. So let's say this is a problem we want to solve, which is written in natural language English. So let's read it over very quickly. So points on a two-dimensional plane are identified by their sign distances from the x and y axis. So which means we got basically two values to actually characterize what a point is in a two-dimensional plane, the x and the y coordinates. A point may move arbitrarily towards any direction on the plane, which means you might move up, down, left, or right, or even diagonally. Given two points, we are often interested in knowing the distance between them. Let's say I'm given a point in P1, and then I want to know what's the distance between P1 and P2. So we are trying to solve some simple problems on a two-dimensional plane, which you did, I believe, previously in your high school math. Okay, But we're going to try with something you're familiar with. Okay, So now I want to mention something very quickly uh, to give you some tips. So typically, when you're given a problem to solve, and the problem is actually specified in natural language, and English is just one example, and like the one we just went over, what you typically want to do is to identify the critical. So here I mentioned the word critical, which means you want to be selective. You don't have to identify every noun and verb and translate them into some corresponding stuff in Java. You only selectively choose some nouns and verbs and translate it into classes, attributes, and methods. So the rough rules over here, let me just write it down. For the critical nouns, you're going to turn them into either classes or attributes. On the other hand, for the critical verbs, like actions that you would like to perform on entities, they will be turned into uh, methods. Okay, let's just see example very quickly. So in the in the case of the uh, two-dimensional points, so I would say the points over here are a class of entities. So we will turn that into a Java class. On the other hand, what about the attributes? Attributes over here, let me just uh, mention very quickly. Attributes are basically characteristics of each of the entities of a particular kind. So in this case, you can see their sign distances from the x and y axis, which means for each point on the two-dimensional points, how do we characterize it? So now let me draw a picture quickly. So let's say this is the normal two-dimensional uh, plane. You got x axis, you got y axis. Let's say I have a particular point over here. So this is the distance from the y axis. So that'll be the x coordinate value. And also this is the distance from the uh, x axis. So this will be the y coordinates. For each point, we're simply going to characterize it by using the x and y coordinate value. So the two values, okay? So these are the distances. So that would be attributes, okay? So now if I go back to the ingredient summary over here, whenever you talk about attributes, they are basically characteristic. of each kind of the entity that you're talking about, okay? So they are kind of static. Uh, you just describe what the entity is like for that particular category, okay? So let's go back here. And then we also say that, uh, so that'll be the, so now we have covered classes, we got attributes. What about methods? You can think about methods is just a way for you to actually either to uh, 
query or ask a question about some objects or to really change uh, the values of the objects. That's something we'll go into details, but I'm just trying to give you some intuition over here. In this particular problem text, so let me use a different color here. So now, for example, you can see that over here, you can see a point may move arbitrarily towards any direction, in this case being up, down, left, and right. So that's kind of like a verb. And also, given two points, we are often interested in knowing the distance between them, which means we want to obtain the distance between two points. Okay, so the orange will be turned into a class, which is called point, and we'll do that in this current video. And also, the, the pink will be turned into two attributes, uh, like X and Y, for example, over here, we can have rather than X and Y, it could be maybe 2.0 and 4.6, right? That's a particular, there's a one particular point at the plane. Of course, we at the runtime, we can instantiate as many points as we like. It can be a point in the, uh, in over here, it can be a point over here, it can also be a point over here, as many points as we think necessary. Okay, and the, uh, and the green one over here is going to be turned into methods, which we will do in later videos. Okay, that's kind of the, uh, the thinking process or analysis process you want to have for each problem you're given to solve. Okay, later on, we're going to solve different problems uh, towards the end of the course to, to uh, really get you f uh, familiar with the process for object-oriented programming. Okay, so now what we will do is we're going to see how we can try to do uh, a point class and also how we can define the attributes over here. Basically, attributes are like variables that can be visible to every method you define in a particular class. Let's see exactly how that's gonna happen because we also have to explain to you the scope for the variables as well, okay? So let's go to Eclipse over here and do some programming and then we'll go back and forth between the slides, the iPad and Eclipse. So now I assume that you're going to create a Java project for this week, lab number five. Okay, create a project first before you continue. So I'm gonna create a new class under the source folder. Let's call it points, okay? So when you create a class, uh, a naming convention to remind you about, okay? It's going to be capitalized, and for each compound word, it has to be capital capitalized as well, okay? In this case, I'll simply say points, rather than points, okay? Typically, the name, the noun for the class should be singular in this, in the, uh, for the reason that we are going to create as many points as we like for this particular template for the point, okay? One more thing to mention over here, whenever you talk about Java class, for example, the point class we're gonna create, we're gonna define basically the common attributes for every point instance, okay? And then we can create as many instances for the point as we like at the runtime. Okay, that's why the point class itself should be singular and we can create as many objects at the runtime as we like. Okay, so now it would be point and now notice that unlike the previous uh, lab exercises, we are not going to create uh, a main method anymore. Basically, uh, we would like to have the following mental picture. Let me just go back to iPad very quickly again. Previously, in your lab exercise, you're always creating some console application, for example, tester, or it can be Fibonacci sequence app. And you always have a main method over here. It's still going to be true in, uh, from now on for the object-oriented programming. However, you want to have the following mental picture. You're still going to have a tester or maybe some app, application class, that is going to have the main method, okay? However, there's only a single class with uh, this particular main method, that's it. However, we're going to have another mental boundary over here called model. Model in the sense that every class that we're gonna create under this boundary for model is going to, uh, is going to correspond to some real problem that we're trying to solve. For example, let's say in the case of the point class, the point problem, we're going to have the point class in the model boundary. But in theory, you can have as many classes as you like over here. So in this course, we're going to show you how you can maybe define under the model boundary, maybe for about three or four classes working together, okay? However, you still have just one single main method, just a single, only a single main method. On the other hand, for all the classes you, def you define under the model boundary, you have no main method, okay? All the classes over here, there'll be no main methods. So later on, when you actually want to test or try to run your application, you always have to go to the tester, the single tester over here, run it as Java application, and it's going to execute the main method line by line. And what will we do? 
basically each line of the uh, code in the main method in the tester or application class is going to somehow create a new object of a particular client. Can be create an object from here, create an object from here, and try to call uh, try to call methods on the objects eventually. That's something we'll see. Okay, again, single tester and then multiple classes without the main methods inside this model boundary. Okay, that's something I want you to, want you to get clear right in the beginning. Okay, but for our particular case, we have only one class uh, under the model boundary. Okay, which is point. And then I'm gonna create a tester in a, uh, a little bit later, possibly in this video or the next video. We'll do a little bit later. We'll see how the time goes. Okay, so now we're gonna have the point class, and now it's gonna under the model boundary. So we have no main method. So we don't click on this box over here, and then we'll say finish. Okay, so now we have the point class over here. Let me maximize it. And now you do not have to worry about the public modifier that's automatically generated for you. We are not going to worry about this public for this course. Okay, just keep it over there. Public simply means every other class in the same project can actually uh, use it. Okay, that's simply what it means. Okay, but you can just leave it uh, over there. So now this is how I would suggest uh, that you organize your uh, point class or every other class you're going to define for this course in the following way. We want to define the first section being all the attributes. Attributes are class level variables that you can define first. And then we're going to define the various kinds of methods, uh, namely constructors, accessors, and mutators. So those are the methods we want to define after we define the attributes. Okay, let me just show you here. So let me uh, give you a little bit of comments over here. For the case of the points, uh, so let me just write some comment here. Okay, so now this class is a template for uh, two-dimensional points. Okay, at runtime, we may instantiate as many 2D point instances as we wish. Okay, just uh, give you some uh, idea over here. Basically, the same idea is going to apply to every class you're gonna uh, create later. So now, inside the class, you can see this is basically the contents of the class, right? You can see starting with a curly brackets, ending with another curly brackets. So now let's define the first section, which will be attributes, the characteristic. Think about for each point you have, what kind of characteristic should it have? for every point. Well, in this case, we decide it's gonna be the X and Y coordinates. So we're gonna define attributes. So the first section will be our attributes. They're basically class level uh, variables. And as soon as I talk about variables, you can recall what we talk about back in the elementary programming tutorial videos. Whenever you wanna declare a variable, you have to give the, its type and its name. Okay, the same idea as before. It's just now we call them attributes. Whenever we don't really say usually class level variables. Okay, for object oriented programming, we normally refer them to as attributes. Okay, and now what's more important is over here. So the scope of attributes are every method in the class. In the current class. When I say current class, the class that we're considering right now, the class where the attributes are residing in. So in this case, the point class, okay? So now let me write it and then uh, everything will make sense after I give you more illustration. So now the first, I'm gonna define two attributes. So first one, I'm gonna be, uh, let's say give a type for the X and Y coordinates, I can say double and X. So typically you do not give any initial value, okay? Okay, I'll say typically you do not initialize the attributes here, okay? So you wouldn't say double X is assigned to 0 0.0 or 0 0.7. You don't do it here. It's not wrong, but it's just not the way to do object-oriented programming. You only try to initialize the attributes in the constructor, as we'll, I will show you, okay? That's, a, that's a more appropriate to do so, okay? I would suggest you follow this particular, you follow the good style when you first learn about object-oriented programming, okay? If you used to do initialization right in this line, try to get rid of that bad habits, okay? So now in the next one, 
I would say double and then Y. Okay, so now we only declare the types of two attributes without initializing them. We will do the initialization for these two attributes in the various constructors. When I say various, I mean we can define more than one constructor. So I want to show you, okay? So now we only got two attributes over here. That simply means every point as a template, basically between every, uh, between every points that can ever be created, all of them, each one of them uh, possesses two attributes. One is the uh, X coordinates and the other one is Y coordinates. Okay, that's about the uh, attributes. And now once we have done the attribute part, we're going to see how we can construct a new instance from this particular template, right? You can see the class is a template. So now the template is only compiled time. You can see so far, we are only trying to edit the code inside the Eclipse, making sure everything compiles. As soon as it compiles, we can now try to instantiate the template to create different instances, in which case we need a tester. Okay, before we do that, let's create a mechanism for us to construct new instances, in which case we need constructors. Okay, so if I go back over here to the iPad over here, so this is why once we finish defining the two attributes in the point class, we want to define methods. And for this particular tutorial video, we're gonna focus on the first kind of uh, special uh, methods called constructor, okay? Constructor basically just for us to create new instances. So something I would like you to really pay attention to, when we talk about templates, it simply define what's gonna be common between all the instances. And as soon as you say create new instances, we're basically instantiating a particular template by assigning some instance specific values. Okay, over there. We're gonna see exactly what I mean over here. Okay, so now let's now go to, let's now uh, define the constructor, okay? So now I'm gonna show you two versions of the constructor, okay? So now for simplicity in this particular video, I'm going to make all the variables with unique names, with no possibility of name clashes. But in the next video, we're gonna show you a uh, easier way to do things. But for now, let's just start with something that's more, uh, that's uh, simple, okay? We don't want to have too, too much complication in the beginning. So now, I would like to define the constructor over here. So now, the second section I'm gonna have is going to be constructor. Constructor will be uh, methods for Okay, you know what? I would like to say methods over here in the sense that it's not a very typical kind of methods. It's a method only used for a particular scenario, which is for creating instances. Okay, say methods for constructing new instances of, uh, not person, sorry, point. Okay, so now how can we do it? Okay, so let me just write out the syntax first and then I'll, I'll talk about how, how you can interpret that. Okay, so for now we are trying to define constructors. Okay, okay, so now I want you to note. Okay, note here we are defining definition. There's a, there's a, there's, uh, there's a reason why I'm trying to emphasize definition over here. We are defining constructors because in other contexts, we're going to use constructors, which will have different syntax. And you want to make sure you understand both and also distinguish, distinguish between which one is which. So now we are defining constructors. So now here is number one rule. Uh, okay, let me just give you the rule. The rule is the name of constructor must be the same as the class name. It must be the same. If you want to create a constructor for a point, it must be called point, okay? In this case, we're just, we're just going to give the name of the constructor uh, over here, just point. The easiest one you can simply define is something like this, just point, okay? And then you can simply, you have to start with a left parenthesis and also ending with a right parenthesis like this, okay? And then you may supply as many uh, inputs as you like. Let me write uh, one version, or let me write two versions for you and then I'll, uh, I'll explain, okay? So over here, I got point here, and then I'm just going to say double, let's say new x, okay? So the reason I choose new x rather than x is because the new x is different from the name for x, so we don't have any name clashes, okay? And then we're gonna say double new y, 
Okay, that's what I would do over here. Which means I'm simply just going to uh, actually, whenever I want to construct a new instance for the points, I'm going to give you two values, the x value and also the y value. For example, if you look at the points I just talked about before, if I want to create an instance that correspond to this particular points, I'm going to give new x being 2.0 and new y being 4.6. If I want to create another points, I can do the same. Okay, something similar. Okay, so now this is the first constructor I have. And then what about what I can do inside this particular constructor? I'll do that in just one moment. Okay, I'll, I'll be there. Okay, I want to show you two versions of the constructor. So here's the rule. You can define as many constructors as you wish. You can, but typically you should need at least one constructor, at least one. But now in this tutorial, I want to show you two constructors. So you're going to get a feel. So two constructors simply means you have two different ways to create instances. Okay, let me write down exactly this, what con this constructor look like, and then I'm going to uh, illustrate to you, okay? So now I have another constructor which has the same name. So now you might be wondering, wouldn't Eclipse be confused because the two constructors have the same name? The answer is, as long as the list of inputs you have either have different size or they have different types. Uh, as long as you actually keep uh, the two lists of input uh, variables to be different, then the Eclipse will not be comp uh, confused. Okay, let me show you what, what I mean. So I can say over here, I want to do, let's say character, and then I would say axis. I'll explain what this construct is supposed to do in just a moment. Okay, axis and also let's say double distance. Okay, so basically now I would say, uh, I'll give you some comments over here. Okay, version number one. Okay, that's a version number one constructor. Okay, uh, creates a new points using two values for x and y coordinates. Okay, and also version two. Create a new point either along the uh, x axis or along the y-axis. So what do I mean by that? Let me just give you one uh, example over here. So now let's say this. If I want to create a point that is going to be along the x-axis over, over here, for example, I want to create this particular point, okay? Of course, one way to do it, I can simply say, uh, I want to create this particular point. It's going to, I will, I'm going to give four, let's say, oh, sorry. I'm going to give maybe minus four and then zero. So I'm going to give minus four as the x value and y zero as the y value. That's one way to do it. But remember, every point along the x axis always have the second value being zero. So maybe I can have a more convenient way not to mention that anymore, right? So maybe I can simply say, now I want to create a uh, point along the x axis, but now the distance between the point uh, between the point and the origin is simply minus four. Okay, that's something I want to create. Similarly, what if I want to create a point over here? Let's say this is the point I want to create along the y-axis. Let's say this point here is simply, let's say six and then uh, zero and then six. Zero and then six. In this case, you can see all, every point along the y-axis is always going to have their x value being zero. So maybe I can simply have an easier way by not mention, mentioning it. So I, I can say, now I want to create a point along the y-axis and then I simply want to have the distance between the points and the origin being six, okay? So now, how do we specify whether that should be the you know, x-axis or y-axis? Let's say we simply use a character as the input. You can either say, if that used to be, uh, if that happens to be x, that means the x-axis. Okay, if that's actually y, it's going to be the y-axis. Okay, so we just uh, have this kind of way to actually specify. You can see, so the two constructors are just different ways of uh, creating objects. The second way over here, 
is more specialized because I want to have a particular point that's either along the x-axis or the y-axis. And the first version over here is much more general because any points can just be identified using the x and y value. Okay, you can think about we can somehow you can think about this is more general and this is more uh, specialized. I'll show you also one something that's also very cool idea. Okay. So now we have these two versions of the constructor for the class, right? So now I want to say uh, one thing more be, uh, about a scope for the variables before I go on and give you a definition. Okay, let me just make a snapshot of what we have done so far. Okay, the complete picture for the class over here. I want to give you a very clear mental picture about the scope for the variables, uh, for the attributes. Okay, let me just uh, paste the Whole fragment for the points. Currently, the, the body for the uh, constructors are simply just empty. That's intentional because I want to show you exactly how you can visualize the scope. Okay, that's uh, hopefully that's big enough. Okay, I want to really draw your attention to this. Okay, you can see that over here. So these are the variables at the class level. You can see directly under the class called points, we have these two variables. So these are the class level, which means their scope is within every method inside this particular class, which is point. What does that mean? That means you can refer to either X or Y or both inside every method that we're going to define, including constructors for this current video, which means inside the body of this particular methods over here, you may refer to X, you may also refer to Y whichever you think necessary. Similarly, inside this particular method over here, you may refer to X, you may also refer to Y. Okay, I hope that's clear to you, right? That's about a scope for the variables. Any attributes you declare for this particular class, we can add more attributes as you wish for other classes, right? As soon as you declare the attributes over here, uh, as soon, uh, once you start defining the uh, methods, you can always refer to any of the attributes inside, okay? So whenever you do any reassignments, let's say if whenever you do any reassignment for the X inside a particular method, that simply means you want to modify the value for the attributes for some particular objects. We'll see exactly what I mean over here, okay? So now that is about the scope for the attributes. I want to say one more thing over here. You can see this is the name for the constructor. You can see both of them are simply called points, right? That's the name for the constructor over here. And then I want to talk about the uh, what's inside this particular round parenthesis over here. You can see the round parenthesis over here and the round parenthesis over here. Okay, what's inside over here? Let me say oh, exactly over here. Okay, let me just say this. It's going to be comma separated variable decoration basically. So this is so-called parameter list input parameter list okay so this is one particular input parameter this is just another one and this is just another one okay you can have as many input parameter as you like in the list the simplest one would be the input is simply uh, the list is simply just empty so you may have for example points over here and then you simply have empty list of parameters that's also possible okay but in this case we have uh let me just use a different color to really represent oh I, I, orange is fine so for this version one of the constructor we have parameter number one comma parameter number two so we have two parameters what about version number two we have parameter number one over here, followed by comma, and then parameter number two. You can see the size of the two lists of the parameters are simply the same. Okay, they're simply the same. And, but how can Eclipse not be confused about which version to actually use? It's simply because you can see for the very first parameter in both lists, their types are just not the same, which means when I'm calling using a double value for the first input. I would know that I'm calling the first version. If I'm trying to use a character as the first input, I would know that I'm calling the second version, okay? Now, so let me, uh, calling is just by use, uh, I simply mean by using. We'll get there, okay? Again, you can see that these two, uh, these two places, I'm simply just defining the constructor. 
So now I haven't talked about how to use the constructor yet. Okay, well, we'll get there. So now one more thing to say. So now what about the scope for the input variables? Input, uh, input parameter simply means, okay, input parameter list. They simply suggest the uh, input values to pass when you call or use the method or in this case constructor okay it's really important so if i have two inputs over here if i want to use this particular version one constructor i have to give you exactly two values this first value must be a double and the second value must be a double as well and each one of them is going to be new x and new y respectively so the order is important okay and if I want to use the second version of the constructor, I also need to pass two input values. However, it will be a little bit different. The first input value for version number two will be a character, and the second value for the version two constructor will be a double, right? Okay, and the first character will just be uh, meaning axis, either X or Y, and also distance will be the distance from the origin, right? So now, what about the scope for the input variables? The scope for the input variables is only within that particular method, which means inside the version one constructor, I can refer to new X, I can also refer to new Y. That's no problem, okay? You can refer to both of them, okay? And however, you cannot refer to other very, uh, you cannot refer to the input parameters for other methods. For example, if you try to refer to access, or if you try to refer to distance, this is not allowed, okay? Let me just emphasize that. So this is not allowed because access belongs to this method. And also distance is not allowed because it belongs to this method particularly, okay? And what's more? Similarly, you can see for this version two constructor, I can definitely refer to access. I can also refer to distance, right? Because they, are, they belong to the same method for this particular method we're talking about. On the other hand, over here, I cannot refer to new x because new x comes from another method. I also cannot refer to new y because it comes from another method. Okay, let me emphasize that. You cannot refer to new x. You also cannot refer to new y. Okay, that's a very important first step for you to understand even before we try to define the constructor body. Okay, you want to make sure you understand the scope for the attributes which is within every method including constructor that you can define. In, the, in your class and also what's the scope for the input parameters uh, that you define for the constructor or the method which will be within that particular method only you cannot use the parameter for another method that's simply not allowed okay as we try to say here okay once you understand the idea about the scope for attributes and also method parameters now we can go back and try to define something and then i'll show you how you can visualize the effects for do, uh, calling the constructor okay so now for this particular one, let me write down the code for you, okay? And then I'll explain. Basically, you wanna say, if I call the first version of the constructor, that means I wanna create, uh, create a new point with the X coordinates being new X and the Y coordinates being new Y, okay? So what I should do is, you can think about this, these two attributes are the attribute values for a particular point object or point instance. So now I want to really initialize the X value. And remember I said before, typically you do not initialize the attribute value when you declare them. You want to only reassign or initialize the, uh, you only want to initialize the attribute value in the constructor. So in this case, I can say the attribute value X over here is going to be assigned to new X. Remember new X is within the scope uh, of this particular method. Now notice one thing, if you move your mouse over new x, you can see it, it tells you new x is referring to whatever value you pass as a new x over here. And if you move your mouse over x over here, it's referring to, you can see the use of x in line number 22 tells you that it's using the x that's declared in line number 11. Okay, so that's some, uh, that's some useful uh, highlights that Eclipse is showing you. Okay, I'm simply saying whatever new X you give to me, I'm gonna use that value and reassign or initialize the X value. Okay, we're gonna visualize this. And then similarly, I would say Y is reassigned to new Y. A very typical mistake is when you say rather, you would say new X is reassigned to X. 
So this is simply not, you can see there's no compile time error, but this is not right. What you're saying in line number 24, which is completely wrong, you are saying that I'm going to get whatever value I want to initialize x into, I'm going to reassign that into the current value for x. Well, it simply doesn't make sense. Okay, let me, let me simply, uh, this is not right. Not right. You should never reassign input parameter. Okay, that's something you want to avoid always. Okay, after this, so that will be the definition for this particular constructor. Okay, I'm going to explain to you exactly, uh, I'm going to visualize both constructors in just a moment. But now, I'm going to define the second one. The second one is going to be interesting. So now, I want you to not abandon what you learned previously before we talk about OOP. So previously, before OOP, we talk about uh, elementary programming, we talk about selections, we talk about loops. All of those might be useful when you actually try to define methods in your uh, class right now, okay? In this particular case, we want to say if the axis input value over here happens to be x, let's assume the axis value over here can either be character x if we want to create a point along the x axis, or it can be character y if we want to create a point along the y axis, okay? It can be either x or y. Depending on which one is which, we're going to create a point accordingly, right? So let's see exactly how we can do it. So now, uh, so now we have a selective action. So we can use selection inside a constructor. Okay. So we can say if axis over here, remember its character. So we have to use equal equal to compare its value. We only use equals to compare string. That's the only occasion. Okay. So now we can say axis if it is simply just x. Okay. What does that mean? That means we want to create a point along as I drew before. If you want to create a point along the x-axis, that simply means the y value is going to be zero. And then whatever the distance you make, you're going to make the, uh, whatever distance you, you, you give is going to be uh, the x value. Okay, so let's just make sure you understand that. Okay, so now along the x-axis, so we will simply say, if axis is simply x, so the x value is just going to be the distance and the y value is just going to be zero, like that, okay? In some way, thinking this way intuitively, I'm gonna show you programmatically. If the axis happens to be x, it would be as if we try to call the first version of the constructor with the new x being distance and the new y being zero, okay? I will see exactly how you can apply that intu in intuition a little bit later, okay? For now, let's just understand the logic. And of course, let me just write one more line for you. So we have the assumption over here. Access can either be X or Y. Okay, it can be X if a point is created along the X axis or Y. Uh, and similarly, right? If the if a point is created along the Y axis, right? I just need to, I don't need to type it. Okay. So now we assume that, so now it's either gonna be x, otherwise it's gonna be y. So we can say else, if else, since we can, since we have that assumption. So now I'm gonna say x is, so now if I want to create along the y axis, for example, this particular point over here, any point, every point along the y axis is going to have their uh, x value being zero over here, right? And the y value can be whatever distance you pass uh, be, uh, between the origin. So what I will do is, I'm gonna say, x is going to be zero over here. You can see it's kind of symmetric, right? And then y is assigned to the distance, okay? So it really depends on what uh, character you pass when you call the constructor, but we're gonna see the call in just a moment. Okay, you can see that over here we have, basically we define the two attributes for your point class, and also we have the two versions of constructor for constructing the points for different scenarios, okay? So this one here is much more general. You just give X and Y value. And this version is more specialized. You want to create either way. Either the X coordinates must be zero because we want to create along the Y axis or the Y coordinate value can be zero if we want to create along the X axis, okay? Either way. So now let's see exactly how we can use it. 
use a constructor. Let me write out, uh, I, will, I will definitely go back to here and try to explain to you what exactly, how exactly is the block of code for the method is going to be executed. Before I do that, let me just give you a little bit more code and then we'll trace all together to make sure you understand. So now remember this picture we just drew over here. So we want to make sure that we have, so so far we have only one class over here, which is the points. That's what we just defined over here, the point. So now we want to make sure we can actually test it. We want to create some simple application. So either you want to test or you want to create a console application Then you will actually need to create a class with the main method. That, that's exactly what we're going to do right now. Okay. And for the lab exercises, you also have to create a console application yourself with the main uh, method. Okay. So now I'm just going to create a uh, tester. Okay. So now what I will do is I'll go back to this particular package over here, right click and then say new and then class. Okay, and then I would say, you can say tester, or maybe I can make it more informative. I can say point tester. You can see it's a compound word, so every word should be capitalized. And now in this case, I'm going to have the main method, which means in this particular class, I'm actually going to uh, create and manipulate point objects over here. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'll say finish over here. Okay. So now, for the main method over here, let's say number one we're going to do is we're going to create point objects. Okay, so now basically we can do the following. Let me write out the syntax first. First of all, you want to declare the variables of type points. You would say points, let's say p1 is assigned to new point. And then I will explain the syntax, don't worry. And then it, uh, and over here, let's call the first version. You can say, what about three and uh, four? Let me give you something negative, how about that? Let's say three and minus four. Okay, and then also we got point P2. And then we're going to have new point, let's say, let's say minus two, and then minus six. Okay, and then we're going to have, actually, I think that'll be enough. Let me make it more interesting for you. Okay, let me, the first line is, okay, I'll say calling the first version constructor. Okay, let me make sure I call the second version. If I want to call the second version, let's say I want to create a point along the X axis. Let's say I put X over here and then how about Y? And then I'm gonna put, let's say, uh, eight over here. Okay, so now I'm call you can see both lines compile. Calling the second version of constructor. Okay, so we got two lines over here. Basically what I'm doing here, uh, briefly speaking, I'm gonna trace the code in just a moment. Basically what we have is, we got P1 and we got P2. They are simply just variables, okay? And the type for the variable is using the class name of the class that we just uh, defined, which is the point, okay? This is something new to you. Previously, you only declare variables like an int, boolean, character, or uh, double integer, you know, stuff like that. But now, every time when you define a class on your own, you can already, you can definitely use the name of the class you just defined as the type for the variables. And the meaning is very important to, to understand. I'll get, I'll get there. And then whenever you want to create a new object, you want, you have to use the keyword new. Okay. And then you want to call the constructor. And you can see in this case, in, we are, because we passed two numbers over here. So now we are calling the first version of the constructor, which is expecting two doubles. On the other hand, you can see the second call over here. We are calling by a character followed by a number. In that case, we are calling the second uh, constructor over here. So there's no ambiguity, okay? So now I'm gonna uh, visualize exactly what's going on over here and trace the code, okay? So what I would, so basically we got two classes over here we have to understand all together. We have, uh, let me say one more thing. This is where we call or use the constructor. Okay, let me just make it capitalized. If you, if you remember in the previous developments over here, I can say, I say something like, 
here we are defining constructors, right? So this this is the place where we define the constructors. And this is the place where we call the constructors. One is about definition, the other one is about usage, right? You want to be very clear about uh, the difference between the two, okay? So now we're gonna trace the code all together, okay? So now I'm gonna co uh, copy the code, okay? So now, number one, I'm just going to, you know what? Temporarily, I'm just going to delete the comments so I can make more space for myself, okay? I'm gonna undo the comments. Okay, temporarily, I'm just going to uh, see if I can make a whole snapshot for the class. That's okay. I think that will do. Okay, version one, version two. And so I'm going to make a snapshot for the program over here with. Okay, I think that'll be enough. Okay, I don't need to worry about the comments because you got the comments already. Okay, so now I'm going to have a new page over here. And then I'm going to paste it. Okay, so bear with me. It's going to be done in just one moment. Okay, so this is the point class over here with the two attributes and the two constructors. Okay, and then I'm just going to go back over here. Let me undo the comments so I don't lose them. Okay, so now let me go to where we use the constructor, the tester. Okay, and then I'm just going to have uh, this. Okay, I'm just, uh, just going to copy this particular code in here. Okay, again, the comments, I don't need to com uh, capture them completely. Oh, let me do it again, sorry. Did it wrong. Okay, I'm gonna capture this part only, and then let me go back to iPad. Okay, and then I'm going to paste that fragment again. Okay, that's a tester. Okay, so now hopefully it's clear to you we have two separate classes over here, okay? You can see over here we have two attributes and also version one of the constructor, version two of the constructor, and also we have two uh, calling the version one, calling version two, right? So these are the four, th uh, these are uh, several things we want to get clear about, okay? So now what I would like to do is let's, tr let's try to trace the code, okay? Let's see this. So when you try to run the uh, point tester as Java application, you can only do that, but not here. If you try to right click on the points and try to run it as Java application, it wouldn't be an option because there's no main method, okay? So now if you try to run this uh, main method here, we're gonna execute line by line, this line first and then this line second, okay? So now I want to explain what this line really means, okay? So now I want to focus on line number one and give you sufficient details, okay? So now, this is how you can think of it, okay? What's gonna happen is, for this particular line uh, here, so there are three parts, basically. So let me use color to actually show you, okay? Part number one is this part over here, where we have the new expression here. New expression simply means, so we have new keyword followed by a call to the constructor and then given some input variable, uh, given some input values over there, three and minus four in this case. And then the second part is basically we, def uh, we declare the variable over here called P1 of type points, okay? And part number three is basically, I'll put in blue, part number three is we somehow try to link the two parts together using an assignment. But what, how do we link everything together? That's something I wanna to explain to you. Let's focus on the orange part first. The orange part here is how you can, this is how you can think of it. Whenever you're trying to use the new keyword over here, that means you wanna create a new objects. But what kind of objects are going to create at the runtime? Okay, by the way, this is already the runtime, right? So you wanna, whenever you talk about new over here, it's really about runtime construction. And when you try to create a new objects, it's really about allocating some memory, some space for you to store the objects, okay? So let me go a little bit lower level details for you to really uh, get it uh, clarified, okay? I'll just give you a little bit lower, okay? It's, uh, and once we understand it for the very first time, we can go back to more uh, higher level stuff, okay? So now think about this is your computer memory over here, let's, okay? As we said previously, the computer memory is simply a sequence of bytes, okay? 
So now you can see uh, basically this one region of the memory. Okay, let's say here. Okay, each one of them is a, uh, is a single bytes, for example. Things like that. Okay, and then each one of them, each byte also has a memory address. For example, for this particular one, it could be 061121. I'll just make it up. Okay, uh, absolute value for the address is not important. Okay, and then so now whenever we try, we try to say uh, the new keyword over here. That means we are allocating somewhere in the memory, and we are trying to create a particular object over here by calling the constructor. You can see that's why having the same name as a class is really important. As soon as we see that this is a constructor name followed by the new keyword, we know that we should go to this particular class over here. Okay. Once we go to that particular class, but there are more than one versions of the constructor at the moment. So what should we do? You should really uh, the compiler, well, the Eclipse. You will actually look at you, the first num uh, the first one to expect is simply just a number. In this case, between the two versions of the constructor, which one is expecting a number as a first? input well it seems like only this one over here right because for the second version it is expecting character as the first input so calling this must be the first version okay must be the first version okay so we must be calling the first version of the constructor over here okay let's just make sure it's understood okay so now as soon as we know that we are calling the constructor from the point class so that means we're allocating some uh, we are allocating a memory for the objects of type points okay so now how how uh, how is the memory allocated basically it goes like this so let me just put the points over here the class name so this means this means we are creating uh, objects of type points so now what information should be stored for each points basically you have to look at the attributes remember we say that each class is simply just a template a template defines for every point objects what characteristics should they uh, should they bear in this case each one of them is going to contain X being a double and also Y being a double okay so that means we're gonna have X value over here and also we have the Y value over here okay so these are the two pieces of information for every point over here of course each one of them is gonna occupy some space of the memory okay so this may not be exactly accurate at the hardware level but conceptually that would be sufficient so that means for this particular region of the memory, we are storing uh, information about this particular new object we are creating over here, right? Over here. So now, but how exactly do we actually store the value for three and also the value for minus four? So that's the issue we want, what you want to deal with, okay? So now you can think about what, so let's think about what is a method, okay? A method, let me write it down. A method is simply a reusable block of code. A block of code. Which means every time, if you want to, whenever you call a particular method, in this case constructor, it's just going to execute the same block of code. Because just by mentioning the name of the method or the constructor, you can actually execute a same block of code. So reusable over here is really important. So you don't have to define many versions. You don't have to really uh, simply write the same block of code uh, over and over every time you try to call the method, right? You can just use its name. Like in this case, we we'll simply use the name for the constructor, which is called points, and then give three and minus four. So now, how do you understand the calling for this particular constructor over here? You can see over here, the first well, let me go back to consistent color here. The first input uh, value we're using is three, which means new x over here should be, we are expecting for the new x, we are expecting double. Oh, let me say one more thing. Because we mentioned that this is where you try to define this particular version of the constructor. And this is where you try to use this particular version of the constructor. When you try to define the constructor, you work at the level of the input variables because the way you say that the x and y attribute should be assigned based, is based on whatever value you get for new x and new y. So here you just talk about in terms of the input variable names, the parameter variable names. But now, as soon as we have a particular call to actually 
execute 3 and minus 4. That means we're going to, for the case of 3, it's going to replace every occurrence of new x over here. So new x is just going to be 3 over here. Okay, it's as if we try to replace every occurrence of new x by 3 for this particular call. Okay, and then similarly, also you can see for the new y, it's just going to be minus 4. For, so for every occurrence of new y, it's also going to be replaced by minus 4. So what would that boil down to be? It's just going to be x is assigned to 3, and also y is assigned to minus 4. Okay, what is x and what is y? So the x and y are basically the attribute value for the current objects that we are trying to create, right? So x will be assigned to 3, and y will be assigned to minus 4. Okay, that's, how, that's exactly how we actually try to uh, execute this block of code over here. So what if we have just another point to be created, right? Let's think about it very quickly, okay? So now, what if I just try to do, oh, let me, say, well, let me just finish this uh, discussion here and then I'll give you another example, okay? So now, this is part one. The orange part that we just talked about over here is about how, how you, you execute new point uh, three minus four, okay? That's a, a right-hand side part. And what about the uh, uh, pink one over here? Basically, whenever you say points P1, you are declaring a variable name P1, and the type is simply just point, okay? But what does that really mean? So P1, you can think about P1 is simply just a variable over here, so P1, okay? And then P1 is going to store some value, but what is the value P1 is going to store? Because when we talk about objects creation, what we just created for the orange part is it's going to occupy somewhere in the memory starting from the address 061121. Of course, the absolute value for the address doesn't really matter. So now in this case, P1 is going to store, let me write it down here. P1 is going to store the address or starting address, the address of some point objects. So this is exactly what's going to happen over here. So that means P1 is actually going to store some address, okay? It's going to store address of some point objects. Okay, let me just repeat it quickly. So now, so that's that's a pink part. We simply declare the variable and we know that you can only store the address of some uh, point objects into it. That's the only thing you can you can store into it. Okay. So now, what about the assignments over here? The assignments over here it simply means we're going to store whatever the new objects we just created its starting address into P1 because P1 is expecting to store some uh, point op uh, address. Okay. So now in this case, the st address for this particular point we just created is zero six one one two one. So we're going to store it. 0, 6, 1, 1, 2, 1. So notice one thing. P1 is really important for you to notice. P1 does not store the x and y value together. It does not because we got two variables to be stored. And in general, an object can contain as many variables as you like. It can be very huge. So now P1 over here, a more general solution is to say P1 rather than storing all the variables, all the class, all the attributes for the objects over here, it's going to store just the starting address of the object in the memory. Okay, so now that's why in this case, 061121 is exactly stored over here. So the advantage of this is when we look at P1, we have to somehow to say, given this particular address in the memory, we're going to look up that particular position in the memory, and from there, I, we can look up what's the x and what's the y. So in some ways, indirect, okay? So now this is indirect, rather than direct. So if you only look at P1 itself, you don't actually know what is the x value for the objects and what is the y value for the object. You have to somehow have a lookup operation, and we have an operator for that. In uh, we'll talk about that a uh, little bit later, okay? So now, what we can, uh, so basically P1 is going to store the address over here, but now, okay, that's about the uh, memory case, okay? So now, so this will be the only time I'm gonna explain to you how exactly things work at the memory level. So now, how do we draw things in a more convenient way, okay? 
we want to make sure we address this in objects over there and also the way p1 store the objects in the rack it doesn't store the object contents it only store the object address okay so that's how i would draw it in this way okay so now in, total, uh, in summary this is how you should draw after executing the first line first of all we're going to use a rectangle box to represent the object that's being created and then should really give a title for the box in this case it's going to be point and given that it's a point object so we should have co contain all the attribute values to characterize that particular object x and y remember the way we characterize each object is by the attributes for its particular class right so now in this case it's going to be two attributes x and y and we draw the attribute names at the left hand side colon okay and then what about the object specific value for the attributes in this case it's going to be three and four so it's going to be three and also minus four so we got three and also minus four over here okay three minus four and then how do we uh well, as soon as we declare some variable over here p1 for example okay so p1 is basically a point uh type variable so now rather so the way we say p1 doesn't store the entire object per se it does not it only indirectly store the uh the address for the objects in the memory so we can simply use this notation we simply say p1 points to this particular objects over here it points to there so once it points to there we know that by looking at p1 directly we don't know what what x is and what y is we have to somehow follow this particular arrow to actually get to that particular object before we can see what the x is and what the y is so now this is how you draw okay so i kind of spend quite a bit of time together with you just to make sure you're very very comfortable with this particular notation over here it's a very brand new syntax to you and also it requires quite a bit of uh, thinking and uh, understanding over here okay again let me recap very quickly and then i'm going to end the current video and then starting from the next video i will try to trace a little bit further okay basically what we have done so far okay we try to show you that by using the new keyword we can call a constructor from a particular class right and for a particular class the constructor might be multiple version over here and we just have to see what exactly are the types of the input values that's being passed over here in this case it's going to be three and four if i simply say three and minus four over here the three actually wouldn't match the character over here so it cannot be this particular version okay it must be this particular version that's being called right okay? so once we call that particular version over there let me just undo that once we call that particular version we're going to basically execute this block of code over here and then we're going to uh, assign some memory uh, location with some starting address over here and then with x and y and then we're going to in this case three and minus four in the case of three it's going to replace every occurrence of the first input variables new x by three and then do the execution and then eventually what you should really realize is this is how we draw how we visualize the object creation you have a new object over here of this particular type with x and y attribute which correspond to the attributes over here okay and then you also have the uh, y uh, object specific values which we assign three and four three and minus four over here so that's why we got three and minus four over here and finally the way you store the objects is indirect so what you store is not is just the address of the objects not the contents for the objects so that's why i withdraw p1 indirectly points to where the object is stored in the memory so that's how you draw the picture so this is really important for you to get comfortable with so we're going to draw this diagram over and over throughout the tutorial video and for the rest of the course make sure you're comfortable with it okay i'll end the current video over here and then for the next video we're going to go with more calls to the constructor either the same version or different versions and do some debugger testing